Item number SCP-4255, Object Class, Keter, Security Level 4, Special Containment Procedures. Due to the widespread knowledge of the base anomalous properties of SCP-4255, it has been given the second degree classification of a crack, veil, and contained anomaly. In order to suppress further information of SCP-4255, Procedure U02 has been created. Procedure U02 occurs as follows. Annually on 12 p.m. UTC, November 22nd, Medic agents are to be implemented into all forms of media, including television programs, new works of literature, foundation fund accounts on social media websites, and various forms of performing and visual arts. These memetic agents are designed to implant false memories into parents or guardians of any children who celebrate the holiday Christmas. These memories include the purchasing of gifts that will be given to the children by SCP-4255 on December 25th and the placing of said gifts on that night by SCP-4255. Any individuals which have been unaffected by the memetic treatment described above are to be located and manually treated. Starting on 8 p.m. UTC, December 24th, Two unarmed military aircrafts are to locate, track, and follow all temporal versions of SCP-4255 and make note of any noticeable changes in behavior from SCP-4255. Lethal force is not permitted when interacting with SCP-4255. When all versions of SCP-4255 have vanished, all Foundation interference is to cease. After 1200 UTC, December 25th, social media to be tracked for any images of or accounts with SCP-4255 and images or conspiracy theories centered around Procedure U2. Any offending pieces of information are to be labeled as hoax or erased, with the publishers being located treated to Class A amnestics. In extreme cases, all viewers of any information described above are to be treated with Class A amnestics, with all social media being cleansed of any information on SCP-4255 or Procedure U02 that these cases could spawn. Efforts to partake in a secondary interview with SCP-4255 are to be attempted as SCP-4255 seems to possess valuable information on controllable temporal anomalies and on the historical future of the human race. Update. This information is not relevant. Description. SCP-4255 is a humanoid male with an age appearance approximately 1.4 meters in height and 150 kilograms in weight. SCP-4255 appears to be in his 60 to 70s. However, reports of SCP-4255 manifestations have dated back to 400 AD. SCP-4255 possesses an appearance similar to the traditional attire of the character Santa Claus. Note, no current connection between SCP-4255 and the Bishop St. Nicholas have been made. Along with the red and gold ornate sleigh that this character is known to be present in, designated SCP-4255-1. SCP-4255-1 is capable of flight via unknown means and is able to travel at speeds of approximately 100 km per hour. With SCP-4255 remaining inside SCP-4255-1 during flight, even when scientifically impossible, SCP-4255-1 is drawn by eight surfeit animals resembling Regifer Torandus, also known by the names caribou or reindeer. Although infrared scans show that these do not possess any heat signatures and it is currently unknown if these are living organisms. SCP-4255 manifestations periodically occur at 8 p.m. UTC, December 24th each year, during which SCP-4255 will appear somewhere approximately one kilometer in the air above Earth's surface in SCP-4255-1 
SCP-4255 and or SCP-4255-1 appear to possess the ability to generate small-scale temporal anomalies. During its appearances, as many as 294 versions of SCP-4255 are present on across the globe at once, and many versions assessing visual differences that have not yet occurred to SCP-4255 from a linear standpoint. SCP-4255 manifestations always follow a similar pattern of events after its initial appearance. SCP-4255 will land on the roof or near a household of individuals that celebrate a holiday Christmas, regardless of religious background, and will use its temporal abilities to enter the household. SCP-4255 will then produce a multitude of wrapped gifts and toys, with number of gifts given varying from child to child. It is also of note that SCP-4255 has a significant understanding of the likes and dislikes of each child on Earth, with presence given having an 82.56% accuracy rate compared to what the children would like to have received for a gift at that time. All recorded gifts have been non-anomalous, with SCP-4285 actively avoiding the giving of gifts a child wants if it could be classified as anomalous. SCP-4255 will repeat this pattern until all children who celebrate Christmas on the planet have received at least one gift from it. Attempts to approach SCP-4255 or SCP-4255-1 in an effort to capture either anomaly on the ground or in the sky have resulted in failure, with SCP-4255 using its temporal abilities to evade capture. Addendum 4255-1 Before an SCP-4255 manifestation on the year 2018, several houses of Foundation personnel were equipped with audio transmission devices, which was then used to make an official direct contact with SCP-4255 for the first time on record. Log 4255-1 Interviewed SCP-4255 Interviewer Researcher Mer. Begin log. Hello, can you hear me? Who is this? This is Researcher Charlotte Mer. I come from an organization which... The SZP Foundation? They told me I'd run into you guys today. Aren't you the people always trailing in those jets? Those things are freaking loud up close, you know. Um, the SCP Foundation, yes. What do you mean by they? Uh, well, it's probably going to mess up time and cause some butterfly or flat crap. I might have told me to tell you guys this for some reason. Well, uh, they're called a U.S. Department of Chronology. Pretty stupid name if you ask me. Chronology sounds like the most sci-fi thing ever. What year is it right now? Uh, want to make sure I don't say anything too major. 2018. Uh... Oh god, well, they said there's some government branch that keeps check over time travel and stuff, and well, they sort of forced me to do this. I like to go find stuff in the past and, well, take it. I have one of Hitler's paintings before, a block from those pyramids that were in Africa, you know, stuff like that. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. What does this have to do with you being, well, being? I'm getting to that. Just give me a second. So one day, some government cronies came and took me away. Thought I was being careful, I did. But I guess not careful enough. Uh, probably have some way to detect time travel. Anyway, they told me I had to do this. Looked nope, like I got off easy. But this got boring after a while. Been doing this for like... Two, two and a half years. One Christmas every day. Hmm, I see... So, do you have a real name then? Stan Plain. I haven't been born yet. That's always a weird thing to say. You probably know me as Santa Claus or something, Della. Uh, you tell a kid your name in the 5th century, 
and a half dead little crap tells everyone your name is Santa Claus. I hope some crazy government shoots me out of the sky so I can get this hell over with. <laughs> so you're a time traveler. Then when are you from? 2099. Huh. Well then, how do you have such a good understanding of each child once for the holiday? Is this some sort of future technology? Uh, not sure I can tell you that. I've caused enough paradoxes with this one interview already. Wait a second. Are you guys going to put this in a document or something? Yes, this will be logged and... Crap! That's how they do. They read this damn log. Excuse me? I ain't saying anything else. SCP-4255 uses a temporal anomaly to vacate the area in SCP-4255-1. End log. Closing statement. SCP-4255 refused all efforts to cooperate with questioning after the offense of this interview, and instead yelled obscenities at interviewers when attempts to question were made. No records of a Stan claim matching SCP-4255's description have been found. Addendum 4255-2 On December 4th, 2097, the Foundation Department of Chronology was formed after the discovery of replicable controllable travel non-linearly through time was discovered. After parallels between SCP-4255's described host organization and a newly formed department were made, Stan Klein, a man matching the physical description of SCP-4255, was tracked and placed into Foundation custody. It was later found that Klein had access to a temporal anomaly allowing him to travel through time non-linearly. To avoid a possible CK class reality reconfiguration scenario or a PT paradoxical paradoxical time breakdown scenario, the foundation is to give claim the full capabilities to perform the actions of SCP-4255 along with the recorded appearance of SCP-4255. Large lay built to the specifications of SCP-4255-1 was created using several anomalies, making it capable of controllable flight. Along with the lay and claim being equipped with devices designed to create small-scale temporal anomalies, eight heat-resistant models resembling the now-extinct Rangerford Talandus were attached to the front of the sleigh in a manner that suggests that they are pulling the craft behind them. Gifts given are to be reduced by the BTKAI, Better Temporal Knowledge Artificial Intelligence Unit, an AI created by the Foundation that uses time anomalies to know all information from across linear time frame, while the BTKAI unit currently only knows information up to 20 beep. This number is expected. Update known to change at a rate that would be constant enough for Klein to fulfill his duties. All other information in the BTKAI unit is classified. It is currently unknown when Klein will finish his duties as SCP-4255. Update! Klein will finish his role as SCP-4255 on the Christmas of the year 21B. Item number SCP-5925 Security Level 1 Containment Class Safe Disruption Class Dark Risk Class Notice Special Containment Procedures SCP-5925 is to be contained in Standard Humanoid Containment Cell B5 of Site 118 Delta 1. Personnel are not to directly or indirectly refer to SCP-5925 by any name, title, or designation other than its item number. No other measures are necessary to successfully contain him in his current state, and this will continue to be the case indefinitely. Level 5 clearance required. Access granted. SCP-5925 is considered an issue class non climative hazard. However, previous attempts to contain SCP-5925 Protocol 4000 issue have been deemed inadequate. As such, Protocol 5925 issue 
has been devised to forcefully associate SCP-5925 with a single title, specifically that of its item number. This protocol additionally requires familiarity with SCP-5925's item number, containing procedures, description, and appearance by as many Foundation personnel as currently available. The clearance level has been adjusted to reflect this, and SCP-5925's incomplete file is to be regularly circulated through junior researcher and security staff in all sites. As an additional measure, the entrance of cell B5 is to be reinforced with iron plating. Following incident, 5925 Holly, the containment class, distribution class, risk class, procedures, and description of this article have been altered in keeping with nomenclative association methods necessary for further containment. These alterations have been marked in blue for differentiation from the standard formatting. Description SCP-5925 is a humanoid which appears to be an elderly male of Northern European descent. Though SCP-5925 has the physique of a 70 to 80 year old man, records that refer to SCP-5925 indicate the subject is far older. He is frail, friendly, charitable, and compliant with the Foundation's instructions. SCP-5925 has knowledge of the full name of all people it comes into contact with, despite having never presently met. It is also aware of current or past material desires of these individuals. Besides this and his lengthened lifespan, he has no other anonymous capabilities. Discovery Log Level 5 Clearance Required Access Granted SCP-5925 was discovered on September 22nd, 1995, during the performance of the 4000 Holloway Procedure. A mistake occurred during the execution of the procedure. Note, the specifics of this mistake has been omitted in keeping with Protocol 5925 issue. The procedure still resulted in the expansion of the fireplace and a ladder descending from the chimney. However, this ladder did not lead to the place of the nameless oddities. And instead, SCP-5925 emerged from the chimney in the site. Notably, despite several members of personnel utilizing the same epithet to describe SCP-5925 in the moment of its appearance, none of them suffered any adverse anomalous effects. Additionally, upon the personnel referring to SCP-5925 by this epithet, it became King docile and amiable is believed to be due to the cultural association of the epithet in question. SCP-5925 then escaped the facility by anomalous means. The specifics of SCP-5925's escape have been omitted in keeping with Protocol 5925 issue, leaving behind gifts for all those present. SCP-5925 was afterward given its current item number and designated as a Euclid class entity. The mistake which led to SCP-5925's initial appearance was later replicated. Being prepared, personnel referred to SCP-5925 by its item number and were successful in apprehending the subject. The relevance of SCP-5925's designation to the success of this operation was later discovered during its containment, and the initial draft of the 5925 issue protocol was enacted. This protocol was later expanded upon following the 5925 Holly incident. Addendum 5925-1 Level 5 Clearance Required Access Granted The 5925 Holly Incident The following is an interview conducted on June 20th, 1996. The purpose of said interview was to establish the difference between SCP-5925 and the entities residing in the Grove of Games and Names. During this interview, details pertaining to the nature of SCP-5925 status as an issue class entity were revealed, leading to the alterations to the 5925 issue protocol to more effectively contain the subject. Interviewed SCP-5925 Interviewer, Dr. Angulo. 
Straightforward, SCP-5925 was shown to be more compliant and cognitive when interacting with only one individual directly. As such, this interview was conducted within Chamber B-5. No other individuals were within the chamber during the interaction. However, two members of security personnel were present beside the chamber entrance for emergency assistance in the event of a nomenclative breach. Begin log. Good morning, SCP-5925. Well, it is in Maria. Yes, yes, I remember. He wanted a proper chemistry set all through fourth grade. And I never did get it. No, <laughs> no, my poor soul. No, you didn't. But you were rather naughty, if I recall. And your mother, Bernelda, bless her. She wished that she could have afforded it. How is she now? I actually came to ask you the few questions. We want to know how you differ from the others like you. Oh, I'm sorry, Maria, but I'm not certain what you mean. When we first found you, we were trying to get somewhere, a place with people similar to you, you could say. I see now, I see. You mean the land of beep. Dr. Angelo winces at this. No effect was detected from this naming. And thus the interview proceeds. Yes, are there are things we found here. It is dangerous for us to name them and the place itself. Well, I imagine it would be. They must be starving for names. Dreadful fate. Well, this clearly isn't the case for you. Of course not, Maria. I have no want for names, for I have collected many. Jolly ones, playful ones, rough ones, ancient ones. And still I collect more. Like this new name of yours, it is cold and harsh. But it is mine now, and all that comes with it. When the others lost their names, why didn't you? I lost my fair share. I am not what I once was. Those times, they split me into many parts. But one makes do if one is to survive. And none of the others could hold on to some of their names like you did. <laughs> I don't believe I ever said such a thing. There are still fear in the shadows causing trouble. There's gaps. There's Peep, of course. You can't afford but to run into him up come spring. And there's Beep, Beep, and Beep. Peep is always good for a laugh. What is wrong, Maria? You look ill. We can't... We shouldn't be having conversation like this without further security. I'm sorry, it's not safe. My apologies. I do not mean to frighten you. I was simply reminiscing. Good times of fun names. Not like this one. Euclid. What kind of title is that? I'm sorry, what was that? Euclid. That is what I am now, yes? A Euclid. So broad. So meaningless. You have all kinds of Euclids. Dr. Angelo and SCP-5925's breath become visible in the air. What are you? SCP-5925. There is no name for me. SCP is a name for cruel, evil, terrible things, and so many of them so varied. But it is mine now, and all that comes with it. Dr. Angelo stands abruptly and attempts to exit chamber B-5. The chamber door jams and is unable to open. Dr. Angelo repeatedly strikes the door. Open this door now! There's been a breach! No need for that, Maria. I'm sure Jacob and Richard are already right on it. It may take them some time, though. Dr. Angelo crouches by the door, breathing into her hands. So cold, so fast. How? The cold has always been mine. The snow, ice, sleet, and, of course, the death that accompanies them. No matter my name, winter follows. As for how... I am an SCP now. I am capable of many things. Just as long as I am stuck in this box with you. Speaking of which, while I have you here, Maria, I must say I am simply not fond of this name. I like another. Can I ask for your help in that? Please. It doesn't have to be new. I am gladly take one of the old. As long as it gets me out of this box. I have too much to do. Dr. Angelo stumps backward, appearing to nearly lose consciousness. I... I... 
I promise the cold will cease, Maria. I wish you no harm. Truly, I don't. All names have power, and in your world, the powers are rather grim. Hurry, your time grows short. Harley, what was that? The Harley King. SCP-5925's body begins to change rapidly. Its hair and beard grow substantially. Its physique becomes much taller, but decrepit and starved. A green hood and robe appear on its body. A pair of seven eight hat nurse, note, described as akin to those of a stag, sprout from its forehead. A stained broad sword appears in its hands. Note, later analysis of these stains suggest they are of tree sap, which may stem from repeated impacts against oak wood. The breaths of SCP-3925 and Dr. Angelo becomes no longer visible, indicating a rise in temperature. <laughs> you are a clever one, Maria. Very sly, very naughty. To beg such an old name, one with such strict rules, and in June no less. Yes, this name does me no good. Not for another four months, at the very least. The door to the chamber open. Security personnel enter, assisting Dr. Engelow to stand. They then begin to escort Dr. Engelow out of the chamber. May you have a merry midsummer, I suppose, and happy holidays. End log. Closing statement. SCP-5925's form reverted after three days. Prior to this, it created a crown of Agaforosei Elix. Note, commonly known as Holly, and expressed a desire to give this item to Dr. Engelow as an apology for its behavior.